Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Enter the Ether, the podcast all about the upcoming third-person MOBA ethereal Clash of Souls. I am your host, the one and only Mangus. Joining me, as always, is my enthusiastic, charismatic, and dare I say handsome, co-host, Jelly Knees. How you doing, Jelly? <laughs> Thanks, Mangus. Feels so special. I'm doing great, man. I'm always happy to be here, as usual, so... This we got week, a lot, yeah, a lot of like crazy info about like a relatively small system. Like it's a weird, <laughs> it's a weird thing. Like the last two weeks, we've gotten like crazy info dumps about something you would think is really simple, and it's not. <laughs> yeah, so that's uh, the, the the main theme of the show is going to be we're going to be talking about uh, some of the changes that have occurred since Ethereal first started out. I mean this. It's been in production for for years now, and of course, a lot of things have been changed. The most recent thing being the map. That's kind of what what brought this on. But before, of course, we get into all that, we're going to talk about their newest um, fun fact, development fun fact that they released on their blog, which is on their website, and in their Discord, which is a entirely new system. I've never seen this done in a MOBA before. Uh, Jelly, you've... You probably have the best grasp of this system uh, out, of, out of the two of us. Do you want to try and explain this to the folks? Sure. So if if it's complicated and you're not understanding, please reach out to me. I'm happy to go over it with you. I had to reach out to Mud and have like an hour long conversation with her to like really understand. I was like, okay, yeah, no, it makes sense now. Um, so yeah, please feel free to reach out to me. No problems at all going over it with you. But so this is... Their loadout system is what they're calling it. And there's going to be multiple combat tactics. Each one will have a different set of stats tied to that tactic. My guess with the image they gave us is that we're looking at the assault combat tactic based on the fact that we have penetration, uh, attack speed, and lifesteal. So this will most likely be what you would take on a marksman. Um... They So you have three stats for each combat tactic, and they'll vary from tactic to tactic. And you'll have a fourth stat that is a custom that you can choose any stat from the other combat tactics. Uh, and it's But it's only those stats. So not all the stats in the game are necessarily implemented into the combat tactics. So there, it's going to be limited in which ones you can choose. In order to decide which stat to take there's going to be a point system so on the image there's underneath the combat tactics there are four boxes with one two three and four corresponding to a color so when you see that color anywhere else reference back to those boxes and it'll tell you how many points that color costs to receive that stat if we move to the right side of the image, let's start with penetration. It says penetration, 1 with a white outline, 4 with a green outline, and 10 with a blue outline. So the 1, because of the white outline, will cost you 1 point to get 1 penetration. The 4 with a green outline will cost you 2 points to get 4 penetration. And the 10 with the blue outline will cost you 3 points to get 10 penetration. So the color corresponds to the cost and the number corresponds to how many of that stat you're getting. For the So that's the same across all of the stats for the combat tactic. The one that is different will be your custom stat, which will be an increased cost for each tier. So instead of getting, instead of one of whatever custom stat you choose, Let's say health regen, just for this, this example. One health regen will cost you two points. Four health regen will cost you three points. And ten health regen will cost you four points. And if you we look at this image and do kind of the reverse math of what they've shown us, we're going to have eight points total to spend per loadout. But that may be subject to change. That's, this is just the image they showed us, so that may be different already or it may not even be accurate in this image. That's just me kind of tinfoil hatting the the image that they gave us. But I think that that covers the system. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's um I was trying to think of a way 
to compare this to other games so that you can kind of have people have an idea of what you're looking at. It's kind of like a character creator where you're picking stats like like you want stamina, you know, maybe you want more stamina for more health or maybe you want more power, like strength for more attack power or something like that. But these custom loadouts and you do this um not even in the game, you you save these loadouts, you create them like well before you queue up and you can create different ones and then save them and then as you, you know, you queue up and you're loading in, that's when you pick your preset, your pre-saved ones. You can't just do this in the lobby. You pick one that you've already saved. So at first I was kind of looking at it like the old Paragon deck system where you build a deck and then you have a couple deck slots and then you, when you queue up for a game, you pick which deck you want to use. But it's a little bit like that, but it's more of a character creator and you pick which character you want. And um, so I'm assuming, you know, maybe um, for if you want to play a tank, you would have a tanky profile that you would go with. Whereas if you wanted to play an ADC, you would have a more assault driven profile that you would go with. Or maybe you want to say the hell with it and you pick the tank, but you've got two tanks on your team. So you just want to do more damage. So you could just go ahead and pick your pick your assault profile that would you would normally use on your ADC. So. I think it's a really cool system. It'll help people counter certain strategies and um, just overall a neat thing that, that they've added into the game. Like really cool stuff. Uh, like you said, it's kind of hard to, it's hard to explain it and it's it's hard to really wrap our minds around it without ever having experienced something like this in a game before. I, I guess somebody said that there used to be something like this in League of Legends, but I have no idea. It's kind of, so yeah, the original League of Legends system was you could buy individual runes that had stats and insert that into a build by itself. And so you could have 10 of this rune, 10 of that rune, and things like that. So it's it's vaguely similar to that. But I actually really like your analogy of, of a character creator. The combat tactic is like your class that you're picking into, and then you're just altering the stats in that class from there. I think that's a great way to put it that makes it way more understandable for a lot of people. The so. other thing <laughs> about this image is we've got these weird, I want to say creatures underneath the image that are silhouetted that we have no idea what do and aren't talked about at all in the blog post. Yeah, uh, in the past. I, I didn't pay any attention to this whatsoever until the old tinfoil titan himself, Jelly Knees, was like, hey, what do you think those images are? I thought they were just like there to look pretty. And then like as I looked at them, I'm like, holy shit, that is something. That is something. <laughs> <laughs> leave it to me to find something where others think there's nothing yeah uh, but i i've been looking at these and the best guesses i have is that there's something to do with the combat tactic itself and potentially what they're doing is that the combat tactic gives you a certain one of these pets i guess i don't know if that's the correct term or not but gives you a certain one of these pets and that pet has a specific ability so when I take the assault tactic and I'm changing those stats, because I'm in the assault tactic, I will have some kind of special, my auto attack does five extra damage or something among those lines. Um, the thing that gives that away to me is demolition. Assault, protect, and reinforcement, you could argue are kind of, you could argue the stats that would be in there just kind of go toward that end. Demolition, unless it contains like damage to towers and things like that, which is an, would be an interesting stat to implement. I would think that demolition means more so that there's some kind of active element to the combat tactics themselves. That's and that a, these are just the visual representation of that. That's a pretty wild theory. <laughs> if you're <laughs> right about that. <laughs> Okay, oh, you, oh. place your bets now because. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, if you look at the if you look at the outlines, one of them looks it looks like a sky slayer. You could you could def if you zoom in on it, you could definitely tell that it's like a sky slayer holding a sword and shield. The next one looks like some sort of little gremlin. I thought maybe it might be like a Nikolai skin or something. And then the other one, um, uh, it looks like the symbol for I think I think it's Ovagon was the uh, realm. Mm -hmm. uh, from back from way back when the old website was up, but I mean it could be like a 
little. I mean, it could be a skull with uh with with some hands or something like that. It's pretty interesting. Pretty interesting stuff. Uh, <laughs> if I'm right, Owen even now is sitting in his seat, going like, "How did he figure this out?" Yeah. Like, yeah, because I it's far fetched to be sure, but <laughs> yeah, that one's crazy, man. That one's out there. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. So I think that's about it for the loadout system. That's about as much as we can really get into. We'll get into it a hell of a lot more once the game's in our hands and we can try this loadout system for ourselves. But let's go ahead and move on with the main topic of the day, which is the changes. Let me switch over to our document here so I know what we're talking about. Uh, first change, did you know that the original plan for Ethereal was to have mounts? In the game, you can summon mounts that would give you faster travel speed. Uh, that was when they had a much larger map, sort of, and uh, a much larger and flatter map, which we'll get to in a bit, too. But that has since been removed. Uh, what do you think, Jelly? I think for the most part, that this is okay. I think it's one of those, it would have been cool to have another cosmetic, but at the same time, if it's not needed, there's no reason to have it. We'll have right. to see what rotation times look like on the map that we have seen to see if some kind of increased movement speed travel mode, whether it be mounts or just like similar to Paragon's travel mode, will need to be implemented. But otherwise, I don't think it's a problem that they're being removed. I think that that's a good that's a good point comparing it to Paragon's travel mode because like they've removed this system, so we don't have to worry about it. But Paragon's travel mode, I mean, there were zero problems with that. Nobody... Nobody had a problem with the travel mood in Paragon. <laughs> you didn't have leapfrogging and people abusing Bloody. the shit out of that system. I think it could work, though, if there were no movement penalties whenever you got dismounted. And, um, of course, you wouldn't be able, shouldn't be able to attack from a top of mount. Uh, another game that does this with mounts is Heroes of the Storm. A lot of you guys probably know that I play the crap out of that. They have a mount system, but that's a very, very different sort of MOBA and... Uh, I think if they did it like Heroes of the Storm, it might work because, like I said, there's no penalty and it actually takes you a while to mount up. You can't just immediately jump on a horse's back and ride out of battle if you're in trouble. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad they took the mounts out. It would have been nice to see a cosmetic like that, but it was probably way too much to put in. Um, so, and I think the, yeah, go ahead. I think if they're going to institute some kind of travel mode, I would actually say to look to Overprime because their travel mode is the better parts of, of Paragons without all the downsides. Yeah. You don't get stunned when you get hit out of it. You don't you just fall out of travel mode and then have to spend the five seconds getting back into it. That's the way it should be done because the penalties just become easily stackable. That you're gonna get stunned out of travel mode, then get stunned again. It just feels really bad. So I would definitely say look to them for at least inspiration. If they're going down that road. Even without that, though, you can still leapfrog with it. If you guys don't know what leapfrogging was, it would, you would take advantage of somebody's inability to mount by one person would keep them in place and prevent them from going into travel mode by hitting them with basic attacks, while uh, somebody else on your team would mount up and get in front of them, and then they would start doing the same thing while the first person would mount up, go around. That's what the leapfrogging was, and it was just very un gave you a very unfair uh, advantage, was easily abused. But moving on to the next topic uh, is the topic we covered when we talked about the maps, which is the uh, the cake layer style map structure has been replaced with the more standard MOBA style map. However, the lanes are still broken apart and at different altitudes. So <coughs> I really don't have much to say on this. I've already said damn near everything I wanted to say <laughs> when we covered this in its own video. Jelly, did you did you have any uh, epiphanies or anything about this? No, I just think this is something that the community is going to have to play on before they can really feel one way or the other about how, how it is set up. But I really like that we're making a consistent effort to use this cake layer hand gesture every single episode. So <laughs> I'm going to start going this way with it. <laughs> um, and then uh, another big change. This is the one uh, that probably set them back the most. When they first had their character models, it was a very anime-looking game. And um, this is one of the things where I think uh, Owen is probably going to kick me in the dick for saying this, but 
there was some Paragon refugee influence here. They don't like the they 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 didn't create like the, the creators of Ethereal didn't play Paragon. They played a lot of Smite and a lot of League of Legends. They never played Paragon, so they don't they don't like it when you say that the game was influenced. P-word. Yeah, the P word. But <laughs> what happened was, I mean, people learned about Ethereal after Paragon shut down. But then they saw the character models. They saw Malaya was the main one that, that was out. And she had a very soft, rounded features. She had these big doe eyes and just very anime appearance. Uh, a bit more smite-ish than Paragon-ish. And then they decided to completely, you know, after people were like, oh, that looks like shit. We're not going to play this game. <laughs> Everybody was, because, you know, people from Paragon are used to the Paragon models. So that's why they completely scrapped all those models, even though a lot of them were already rigged and animated and everything, and came up with the new models, which I like the anime style. Personally, I really liked it. I am glad that they changed it, though, because these new models look absolutely amazing. I think they look better than the Paragon models. That is, of course, my opinion. Some people will think they look on par with Paragon models. Some people will say that they don't look nearly as good, but... I don't think anybody can say that they're just like like a million steps below the Paragon models. They they I think they look better, but I, I think this was a great change. I think this will bring a lot more people into the game. It just it they, the new character models look fantastic. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And at the very least, if this is where we're starting, you can only go up from here. Right. Right. Like they're only going to get better and better if the game is supported and and well-loved by the developers, which it feels like it is. So even for how good they are now, I can't wait to see like when they institute some like crazy transformation aspect or XEL. I think that's the one I'm most excited to see in how he is, his shadow is going to interact Mm -hmm. and look different in the world. I think it's going to be crazy to see. I hope he has a Johnny Cage shadow kick. (laughs) (laughs) That would be amazing. Oh my goodness. (laughs) He does look a little bit like Johnny Cage. You throw some sunglasses on him, you got Johnny Cage oh, right no, there. No, stop. <laughs> He's going to uppercut people's heads clean off. <laughs> Another thing, like uh, the old model for Kalia. Uh, mm-hmm. she, had, she didn't have many clothes on. She looked, again, very anime-ish. And uh, you've probably heard us say before that I actually think she looks better with the more clothing. And she really does. Like her model is significantly improved with her little tunic and uh, just the overall changes to the Kalia model. Absolutely. And hers, I think the fur texture is really where hers like goes above and beyond Mm, that looking at her, her arms, you just like, like that's so much detail packed in such a small area. Really cool stuff. So what's our next one, Jelly? So the next change is that in the original map, that was the, the cake layer, right? We're gonna we're gonna keep <laughs> using those hand gestures. Um, the cake layer, the lanes themselves were relatively flat looking. And granted, we only saw a very limited amount of that map. But the new map that we've seen, not only are they staggered lanes, but in the lanes themselves, there's way more verticality. Just from what we've seen with platforms above and trees going across over paths and things like that, and it looks insane so there's going to be multi multi level layer multi what, what am i trying to say here um multi level verticality there we go in the lanes themselves and in lane which is just going to be crazy to see yeah i think the the original map looked very smite-ish like smite mm-hmm. is supposedly a third person moba I, I say it's a two 2.5 but the the lanes are very flat you do have the rocks and stuff but there's no real altitude change. You don't run up and down those rocks. They're just in your fucking way. And then everything else is flat. Whereas in Paragon, you see a rock like that, you might be able to climb climb over it, jump over it, stand on top of it, whatever. Um, and then they've changed. Again, I think it was a lot of this was due to, you know, the Paragon refugees coming in, looking at how flat that map was and be like, hey man, can you add some hills to that? Then we might play it. And so they did, and then they we came out. They came out with that beautiful new map um, that we originally saw, and then they even updated that even further after that. So we have what we've seen most recently. So I really like it's. It's been which eat with each one of these changes though. It has pushed the alpha date back, 
which I think is fine as long as we're getting a better product. And I think that's mm-hmm. a lot of people will complain about that. You know, here's a fun fact. <laughs> Their original alpha was scheduled for November of 2018. I know. Oh man. <laughs> but, but that was with the very flat map and the anime style models for the character. Oof. So, um, and here we are December. Oh, it's not even December anymore. It's January, 2021. Yeah. <laughs> Happy new year. But yeah, I think oh, it's, man. Uh, hope, well, I hope, I hope that it's worth it. Playing the demo that we did for extra life. It was definitely worth it. That shit was so much fun. And it yeah. So and that's, good. I keep thinking back about extra life and like even just what it looked like aside and all of that. I just remember being in it and like having a great time. And that's all I want for Ethereal. Is it just, I, I want it to be fun. Yeah. And so if it comes out and it's fun, I'm in. Well, whatever it is. <laughs> uh, this next one, it's not really a change as much as what happened to the Overseers, man. <laughs> like, yeah. We, we, they still plan to have the Overseers. They don't plan to have them in the pre alpha, though. They've already come out and said straight up that the Overseers are not going to be in the pre-alpha. And the Overseers, of course, being their eighth class that nobody knows jack shit about and everybody likes to throw, (laughs) including us, likes to throw in our own two cents and try and figure out what the hell the Overseers could possibly do. But it's been years since, like, they mentioned Overseers and then nothing. That was it. (laughs) (laughs) We're assured that the idea hasn't been removed, but uh, go ahead, Jelly. I was going back through the other day and looked for their announcement in the Discord. And sure enough, it was like two and a half years ago. And I was like, it's been that long? Like, it's weird that we still don't know any information about them at all. They're playing other that than really they close exist. to the chest. I bet the only people that know anything about the Overseers are probably Owen and Kai. Yep. <laughs> and- and that's probably it. They probably have people working on character models and they're not even telling them that they're working <laughs> on an overseer, you know? <laughs> yeah, oh, the really great mystery. The great ethereal mystery. So what uh, I can solve that one. If I can solve that one, I'll be impressed. <laughs> yeah. So what's our next one, Jelly? So Owen who was originally a myth that we'd seen model for. He was in the original login screen that they showed us. Uh, he's been removed from the myth pool. He's no longer a myth that's in development. Um, he, it, as far as we know, will not ever come out. So that I mean, that's he was one of the ones that looked really cool and could have had really unique gameplay. So it surprises me that they removed him, but I imagine that they had good reasons for doing so. Yeah, uh, there there is a specific reason that he was removed, and I cannot, for the life of me, remember what it was but yeah <laughs> he was kind of a cool cool hero um without knowing anything about him though like i don't know whether i'm sad or not that he was removed like i don't even know what he was i know he was supposed to be a reaper that's about all i knew know about owen to me so what i was looking at today of owen's old model is it looks like they may have just replaced him with xcl yeah kind of yeah um in that the model is very similar, the Reaper aesthetic. Uh, we didn't know anything about Owen's lore, so it's possible that that's who they wanted to be, Malaya's brother, and they just shifted it to XL instead. But the world may never know. It's like, how many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop? <laughs> that uh, about covers it. There's been, like, now that you mention it, though, like, this is something that people bring up a lot. That original login screen, there was like a werewolf style hero off to the side. And a lot of people are like, hey, what happened to this werewolf guy? Like that's mm-hmm. another that's another big mystery. We don't I wonder if that was Kai. So we had Owen and Kai, and now oh, neither of them are a thing. Now neither of them are in there. They sacrificed themselves for the <laughs> game. <laughs> another change, I talked about this a little bit too, is Grace's hair went from white to uh to just to, to Bellica Brown. Oh my God. Would... I never realized that, but yeah, absolutely. It did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even in her, um, emoji that is in the, uh, discord, her hair is white. And I, w- I wish that would have stayed the way it was. Hopefully they can just do something. They can just make it white. Cause I wanted, I wanted white hair, Dr. Grace. I don't know how I've never noticed that before. 
I assume, though, that she'll be in her mech for the most part, and we won't even see her hair, but... Maybe. I see. That's the, one of the ones I'm most excited to see her kit, because how does a mech and a medic work together? <laughs> I, I just, I can't see the connection, but I can't wait to see how they made the connection. And I'm only assuming that she'll be inside the mech. Maybe the mech just follows her around. <laughs> like, I don't know. But I think that's all we've got for this week, Mangoose. I do you got anything so. to plug for yourself? Uh, no, I did I did another one of my State of the Game videos if you guys want to check out what's been going on with all the different games I track. But, uh, yeah, that's about it. What about you, Jelly? I've got five more videos coming out this week. I went through and you I have five plans. more videos. Man, you are a madman. <laughs> <laughs> I've got plans for another 20 videos right now. So I, I just putting that out there and I'll do one a day during the weekdays, take the weekends off to get the others made and do that for as long as I can before we run out of stuff to talk about. Right on. Well, with your uh, with your imagination, I imagine you'll never <laughs> run out of things to talk about. <laughs> But uh, that's going to wrap it up for this week, folks. I, I know there have been a lot of changes to the game, but I hope hopefully they're all for the better. And hopefully the postponed alpha will result in us getting a much, much better product. So I hope you all join us as we enter the ether. Jelly guns. Mangoo.